So the last speaker of this session is Pierre uh, Auger. I hope I said it not too badly. He's a um, fluid dynamics researcher uh, in Legge in Grenoble. And he will explain how to accept, accelerate NumPy, NumPy Python code with an assortment of uh, different accelerators using uh, Transonic. Please go ahead. efficient, very fast, and it's really HP, HPC, so, so that's it. And so one question is, can we write this kind of package in Python? Uh, and um, so when, when I see, well, when we consider Python, uh, new version of, um, of Python, the new Py API, and uh, if we also consider a new API, API to describe numerical types, you see something which is very close to, to Fort 1, actually, so we, it should be a fine way to request algorithms. Uh, but, unfortunately, by Python interpreters are really, really bad at crunching numbers. So, C Python, of course, but also PyPy as soon as you use the exponent, and we use the exponent. So, as a result, Python scientific stack is not mainly written in, in Python, and if you look at that, and all which is at the bottom, Um, is it so what? Is it bad? Um, it's, it's not so good. If you, for example, if you com compare to Julia, where well, everything is written in Julia, um, for, for the people who, who, who de develop the package which are at, at the top over there, and the, in, the students who develop this package, they have also to, to write Cyton, to write C, to write this kind of thing. So it's not so nice. So let's try to do something. So with so, so this is the new package from Sonic, so which is a pure Python package to use um, uh, uh, Python accelerators. So the, the principle would be to keep the code as simple, as clean, uh, as just a Python new code. We to just add type annotations sometimes to add some annotations to say how you can compile the new code. Um, and, and to be able to do a head of time comp compiling and just in time comp compiling uh, compilation and uh, so it means that we, we can we can do just in time compilation based on uh, the of time compilers and to be able to accelerate uh, pure functions methods block of scores and that's it and so it's a work, of, a work in progress we have currently three backends uh, python Cyton, and numba so a few examples for example, you can, you can write something like this. Um, so at the top, we import NumPy, you may know this line, and then uh, boost uh, decorator from Transonic. And you, this is for ahead of time compiling, so you need to add types in that case. Uh, you, you have a type variable here. They are very simple types, so you just can put them in, them in, uh, in strings. And you decorate some functions that you want to, to compile. So here there are two functions that do the, the same thing. 
um, uh, high, um, high level implementation and a low level implementation. Um, so you might want to, to know, guess which one I prefer. But anyway, uh, these two functions can be, can be accelerated with, uh, with uh, Python, for example, or, or with uh, Python, and that's it. <coughs> if you don't like uh, type annotation and types, you can just use uh, the JIT uh, decorator, and it's going to be also very efficient. Um, sometimes you need to, to describe types a little bit more than um, more complex time. So we have also a system like this, because there is, I don't know any 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 package to, to describe types, complex time in, in Python. So that's it. You can say, okay, this function can be inlined uh, and add the, the return type. And this in for in, in with uh, Python is really very, very, very efficient. Uh, you can also accelerate methods and, and that's it. So white transonic, okay, yet another Python accelerator. So not really. Or not at all. It's really a, me a meta meta compiler uh, which uses other compiler, and it's, it's done to fix issue of uh, of our community. So we have completely incompatible accelerators. So you if you write a site on code, you can't use at all uh, uh, Numba, and if you write Numba code, you can't use at all Python and Python is the same. Uh, and we have kind of uh, this uh, Python hegemony, which is not bad at all, but that. Python is used a lot, a lot, a lot, and it would be nice if uh, other, other compilers would be used a little bit more. And uh, Python in particular is really, really cool and, and should be used a little bit more. So I, I give a talk on performance with Python, so I have to, to say basic things. So first, uh, performance is not everything. First, we, we want to write a nice, nice code. We want to write readable code, maintainable, and correct code. And, and uh, optimization is always a balance between uh, the energy, the time you spend, and the generality of the code and, and the read readability. You don't, don't want to write everything in C. So do not every optimize everything. You, usually, we want to optimize only the few lines that take time in the code. And to, to do that, we need to measure, so profile. Uh, of, of course, you need to, to do unit text before to optimize to keep the correctness of the code. And before to put any, any uh, boost, uh, JIT, uh, things like that, you need to think about the algorithm and the, the, the data structure first. And then proper compilation are needed for really high performance. So um, since we don't, we don't need to, to optimize everything, and uh, because Python interpreter is really bad, are really bad just for quantity number, we, we have to focus on few numerical functions. So that's why we, we use a, a boost a, a, a decorator to decorate only functions. We, we care only on, on the numerical kernels. Um, and when I say compilation needed for high efficiency, it's really it's not the compile of uh, C Python, which is, where there is no optimization at all behind that. It's really compilation to machine is, to machine instructions with uh, with uh, optimization. And so you have to know that there are two modes of compilation: a just-in-time mode and a ahead of time mode. And both modes are really useful in real in real life. And so that's really good to be able to do this, to do both and to have an API to, to do these, these two things. And in Python, just a vocabulary, vocabulary thing, first, usually we transpile the code to something else. So for example, to C++. And then. So there are many tools already to, comp to compile Python. And uh, when you consider these tools, you have to consider at which level they, they, they compile the code. So for example, uh, there is a new, new car, well, I don't know how to pronounce that, <laughs> which compiles the whole program. Uh, PyPy is very, very clever, it just compiles the slowest loops. Um, and uh, the Cyton and Python, they, they compile modules. And Numba, it's, it's focused on user-defined functions uh, or methods, and last transonic, as you saw. Uh, Transonic will do also block of, block of code, um, and that's it. And then we have to, uh, we, when we consider compilers, we have to consider which subset of, of Python they, they manage to, to properly compile. And uh, there is something which is sh 
sure that for our really high performance, we don't care about, about uh, compiling everything, and we don't care about, for example, compiling things that use the inspect module in, in, uh, in, uh, in Python, or meta class, or things very complicated that we don't use in the, in the numerical kernels. What we need is Python using the numerical kernels, and so like dic dictionaries, things like that, and NumPy. And then there is a question, do we, do we need to really classes, so this is an open question. And then we really need also to, to think how much the, the compiled code in, interacts with uh, the Python interpreter. You can compile things, but uh, if you interact too much with the Python interpreter, it's going to be very slow. Anyway, we have Python, which is really the most used uh, Python um, compiler, so which is really a great, uh, a great tool. Um, which is a super set of Python, which is a great mix of Python. You have to be very good in Python, very good in C, because we can do nearly all C, uh, and also good in the, or you have to know a little bit of the C Python C API. So this is a great tool, very, very powerful. You can do many, many things, but it's, it's, it's a tool for experts, in my opinion. Um, and it's very mature. It's very efficient when you when you write code which looks like a lot of like C. Good. And um, in my experience, for the code that I wrote, um, I, I tend tend to, to write a big uh, C extension in in, in uh, Cyton. It was it becomes more and more difficult to maintain them, and uh, students can't work on them, and, and that's it. So that. So then we have NumBar, which is a pair method JIT for our Python NumB code. Uh, it's very simple to use, um, and there are many clever things like uh, GPU and interaction with SuperI, for example, and that's it. So um, NumBar, if we want to find bad uh, for NumBar, it does only JIT, maybe I'm wrong, but only something like that. And sometimes it's not as efficient as it could be. Uh, and especially for the high level NumPy code, it's not very, sometimes not so, so good. And then we, there, there is Python, which is a header type compiler for modules using Python NumPy. It, it transpires Python in very efficient C code. It's uh, very good to optimize high level NumPy code, which is a nice, very nice thing. It, the extension using, using Python just really never use the Python interpreter, never interact with the Python interpreter. So there is no story about the, the deal and, and things like that. We don't have it in, in, with Python. This is a very good point. Also, if you have a, a NumPy code working with, uh, with Python, you can just use it in C++, uh, C++ project just uh, without uh, dependencies in, in uh, Python, in uh, Python, in Python. And it's usually very, very efficient. Um, usually faster than, than this. Um, and uh, it's very efficient because it does a uh, high level optimization in, Pyth in Python for first uh, transforming the Python code um, and then low level optimization with the, with the C++ compiler. And it uses uh, CMD instruction with X CMD. CMD. Um, it understands OpenMP instructions, so you, we can do just OpenMP as in C++, in uh, Fortran, in anything, so it's really, it's really cool. Many, many advantages, there are also disadvantages in, in, uh, in, uh, with, with Python. Uh, some of them, I won't go in, into, this, into this list, I, I don't have time. Some of them will be, uh, for, you, have, you can forget them with, with Transonic, and there is one with Developer, that's it. So it, we have to be careful. So first, first conclusion: uh, we have a great language. Uh, we, we can write uh, nice, uh, nice code in, in Python. We have clearly a, a performance issues for crunching, crunching numbers. So we have to accelerate uh, numerical kernels. There are good compilers um, for Python Ruby codes. All are false and coarse. And, and all use um, the three compilers that I told you about use, use very different technologies. And so this is really good, that, because uh, di diversity is good, all type of diversity is good for open source, and so we, we have to use yeah. it. And Python is really great, we, we, will, we would be 
wise to, to use it and to support it. And it's, it's really a link with C, the, C, the modern C++ community and which is good for, for our community. So the issue is we have incompatible accelerators and the Cyton hegemony. So what, what can we do? For example, with Sonic, we can, we can use white code, uh, a clean, uh, modern Python new code, and it can be accelerated with the different, with different uh, uh, compilers. So how does it work? Just for those who know what is ASP analyzes, we do that, we analyze the code, we create, and we write the Python, the Cyton, the Numba files, and we compile them when, we, when needed, and we use the fast, the fast solution when available. And I won't tell you about that, just uh, you remember this code, so where we have these two functions, the high, high, high level implementation and the low level implementation. Uh, we, can, we can have a, a bench, small benchmark for this. Uh, so in Python, the high level implementation, the NumPy implementation is quite fast, or it's not too slow. Um, the solution with loops, of course, is very, is completely, very, it's very, very slow. And with Cyton, with Cyton used in, in, uh, in Transonic, we can get pretty good solution, but uh, we, we are not very good to accelerate the high level code. The same with Numba, but with the Numba, we really, good, we really get very good performance. It's a solution with the loop, and with Python, it's even better for, for, for both solutions, it's very good. So that's fine. And for the JIT, uh, JIT case, where we don't have a type annotation, it's also pretty good for it. So the same, the same result for Numba and Python. For, for Cyton, it's a little bit more difficult because we don't have the type. We need the type sort for our Cyton. So as a conclusion, uh, there is a new packet which is called Transonic. So you, it provides a unified um, uh, Python API for, the, for different Python NumPy accelerators. So it's a new package, it's also a long-term a long project here, just a prototype, it's a working prototype, so it can really be used. And with, with this code, you can, we, we can really write um, a Python, new, Python package just in Python, and they can be very, very efficient, just uh, as efficient as in any language. Uh, so that's cool. No? And uh, so there are many perspectives, for, of course, and feedback would be really appreciated and, and help, help needed. So thank you. So anyone, a quick question? <laughs> okay, you. Thank you for the presentation. So maybe uh, I was too slow compared to your speed um, to understand, but it seems to me that your Cython support is really just superficially just uh, adding uh, just the type of the input function because usually in Cython you have to do some work inside the function or? Uh, I don't think in, with Cython uh, you can go faster than... Okay, I was not... With, with, this, with this function, so you, you see that here... No, here I don't, I don't do that. Okay, um, so that's my fault. But you can you can do a lot of you, we support quite a lot of uh, site site and uh, features. So for example, here in, in Cyton you say okay this function we we don't uh, we don't uh, we don't wrap wrap around on the indices. You can do that. And you all the, the the local the types of the local uh, variables they can be they can be added. And so we. It's difficult actually with Cyton to be much faster than what we get with this implementation. And that's, that's why it was uh, the, the result, the benchmark, where it was pretty, pretty fast with. Um. I have a question about the ahead of time compilation. So, if I was to run multiple Python uh, uh, processes, um, could they use the same uh, compiled binary that a previous Python process produced with the ahead of time compilation, or would they all have to yes. recompile the same thing again? Um, they, they are going to use the same. It's a cached 
as it, is it saved to the file system in the same folder or something? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So. Uh, so I have a question about sort of comparing uh, code and problems and data. So every sort of, you know, every problem and every code that solves the problem and any, every data is kind of different. And uh, since, you know, all, the, all of the compilers you mentioned use kind of different approaches uh, to, you know, uh, creating, uh, creating binary code, do you think it's feasible to, you know, use Transonic to, to write a tool which effectively just tries all of them, does a bunch of micro benchmarks on data, and then tells you, you know, for your particular problem, you're better off using Cython, for example. Well, thank you for, uh, for your participation. Let's thank the speaker again, and then we can go to the <laughs> coffee break.